All right, we're going to finish building out our PKI environment for AACO and BBCO. Again, this is an abbreviated installation where we're putting basically all the roles and functions on a single server, which is not recommended. I'm just doing this so that we can uh, set up our cross forest uh, PKI auto enroll scenario. So we're going to start out by installing the Windows features for uh, PKI and we're going to establish a folder and a share and that shared folder is essentially going to be the virtual directory for the uh, C CDP uh, that hosts the CRL and the certs etc. So here we go starting out with uh, Tucson ICA1 dropping that script you saw in the previous screen there and off and running and we're going to flip on over to Phoenix ICA1 and do the same thing here shortly. You can assume that whatever we did on one, we're doing on the other. So Phoenix ICA1 and Tucson ICA1 are going to be essentially configured exactly the same. I broke up the scripts to reflect each individual server, and in fact, there's two separate scripts, one for the www server, the one that installs that those features, and the script for the PKI server itself, and uh, OCSP is a separate part of uh, that script as well. Just checking in, Tucson ICA is still installing. Phoenix is installing. Okay, the features are installed. OCSP is installed. Then we're creating that share. Creating some blank, uh, a blank index web page and a blank, uh, I forget what the other page was, but it has something to do with PKI or OCSP. Then on the server, we're going to open IIS Manager. Go to the default website. <clears throat> and we're going to add that new virtual directory pointing to FPKI. That's basically where you're going to want to drop the uh, certificate revocation list and the root and issuing CA certificates. So you'll establish the CRL and the AIA. So we're enabling directory browsing. And what are we doing? Yeah, allow double escaping and request filtering. Repeat the same in Phoenix. Later in the video, I got a little compressed for time, so you might not see me perform the same function on both servers. But the end result is both servers were treated exactly the same. Again here, enabling directory bowsing and double escaping request filtering. All of these uh, various settings and uh, other information is available in the links that you'll find in the description for this video. Okay, so now we're ready to begin installing the certificate services side of things. Very first thing you want to do is establish a CA policy inf in the C Windows folder. This should be in place before you even install the any certificate services role. Uh, there's settings in there that you will not be able, able to adjust after the fact.
Now we're just looking at some of the steps for setting up OCSP here. Just wanted to give you a look at the script, get you uh, an idea of what we're headed for here. So here we're just building up that CA policy in file. I did it as a script, yeah, add content, sort of a boring way of doing it, but it gives you the opportunity to do it on the quick without worrying about is the file in the right place, does the file have the right things, and what happens if I need to add a different parameter. I can actually use that set of commands on both servers because it's the same. Now here, this is a unique command. This command installs the certificate services and establishes the CA name. So that's very server specific there. Okay, the certificate services is installed. There's additional, all of these settings wind up in the registry. Uh, I might actually demonstrate that path in this video. I'm not, I don't recall off the top of my head. I'm basically cropping the heck out of this video and then doing a voiceover uh, watching the video after the fact. Again, cutting out the paint drying scenes. Uh, <clears throat> Some of the parameters here are the uh, validity period of the certificate service, the validity period for issued certificates, uh, the renewal periods, etc. And of course the various paths to the CDPs, to the CRL, to the AIA. We're going to get to the end of this and you'll see that when we open PKI view, everything checks out. Now one of the things that we did in this particular installation is we eliminated all of the LDAP related references to PKI in the certificate service. And this uh, really helps us get past uh, client problems where they're trying to resolve something in uh, LDAP, trying to reach Active Directory when they're not connected to the network. Uh, basically everything will be available via the www servers uh, whether it's internal or external those services will be available that's one of the reasons why you'd want to separate the web server role from the issuing CA role is you don't want to expose an issuing CA to the raw internet again like I say we're building an abbreviated uh, PKI deployment here with all of the features and roles on the same server Normally you'd want to offline root CA issuing servers and then separate WW servers that would have both a private and a public uh, presence. Let's see where we left off here. Okay, so I've installed the role and I picked up the uh, CRL and the cert for the Tucson ICA1 and put those in the F uh, PKI folder. Again, that's so the CRL is being served by the www server. We'll just call it, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to call it that's going to be easy in this case. <clears throat> so again, here on Phoenix ICA1, I'm going to the cert and roll folder, which is in the default location in uh, Windows System 32. And then I'm going to copy those, the CRLs and the issuing cert into that FPKI folder. And again, that's really just so any consumers of these certificate services can check for uh, the revocation of that certificate that they're looking at or look at the policies of the certificate service. OCSP essentially catches the CRL and does the lookups on, based on client requests. So instead of sending the whole CRL file, which can get very large in an active environment, it basically catches the CRL and does lookups against it and responds to the client. So OCSP looks to be the wave of the future. Uh, 
certainly better than having to dish up a three or four meg file to everybody that cares to ask. Here I'm just finishing uh, installation of the certificate web authority. That lets you manually uh, request certificates. You might be familiar with it as you know server name slash cert serve where you can manually request certificates. There are instances where you might need that feature uh, available. Generally, when you publish certificate templates, they're going to be available uh, in Active Directory, and you'll be able to request them through the certificate uh, control panel interface. Okay, we're going to looks like we're getting ready to do OCSP. So the first thing you need to do is prepare a certificate template for OCSP. There is a, an OCSP template that you're going to make a copy of. Always make copies of the default templates. Don't use the originals or modify the originals. Uh, otherwise, you won't have any originals left and you won't be able to go back to what the defaults were. So here I'm going to grant read, enroll, and auto-enroll to the OCSP certificate to the group called OCSP servers. This lets OCSP servers get their own OCSP certificate at their leisure. That certificate just establishes a chain of security so that you know the response you're getting from the OCSP server is uh, based on this trust that comes from being certified by the issuing CA. There are some, some firewall rules on OCSP servers. Basically, you can create an array of OCSP servers and copy the settings from one to the other. So setting those firewall rules uh, basically lets you have your OCSP servers uh, operate in an array. Okay, so this is manual here. I didn't have a script. I imagine there probably is a way to script it, but basically just going to configure the online responder for the AA Co cert service. You can see Active Directory is already picking up the certificate service and I just have to find it and install that OCSP response signing certificate. Now we're going to just check the health. It says it's working and we should check the server and see that the certificate is okay and it is wow this has been a fast 12 minutes it's about 13 minutes we just have a few minutes left of this okay here oh boy here we go we're just getting right into pki view and we're going to check the certificate health so you can see the root ca is okay AIA locations are okay, the CRL locations okay, the certificates present. Uh, same thing here on the Phoenix side. Quite an amazing feat. We got everything healthy and okay just straight out of the gate. And that concludes the PKI setup for our lab. Look forward to the Cross Forest Auto Enroll next.